The time has come. Let's talk about the Bamboo Tool Changer. So a little while back, Bamboo finally released the H2C. This machine using their Vortex system offers tool changer-like advantages in the form factor of their H-series of printers. And although it's an innovative take on the tool changer idea, what compromises were made to allow this system to operate? Well, today we're gonna unbox the thing and get it all set up. I wanna touch on the Vortex system and what specific advantages and disadvantages this setup offers. And then we're gonna print some stuff just to see how good it really is. For $2,500, it better be good. Let's unbox this sucker. As is the case with my H2Ds, this is a big box that requires some big strong man muscles to move around. And as such, I didn't move mine, I opted to open it on the floor. The engineered box slides off the top of the printer after removing these tabs here, and everything appears to be intact. Which is a bonus with this machine. This sucks. You just take your plastic off the door here. Moving this machine to the bench was a bit of a chore, but this body was clearly made for work like this, so we persisted. <sighs> After getting more plastic unwrapped and stuff, we could move on to the finer points. Of course, the AMS color swapping unit ships inside of the machine, and this is about the point that I realized I should have gotten another AMS or an AMS HT with this order. I don't like manually feeding my filament into my machines, I want a robot that does it automatically. Sue me. So as I began unwrapping plastic and peeling tape, I decided to steal an AMS from my P1S that's been sitting around with a clogged nozzle. I know, just clear the clog. I simply haven't yet, okay? But as this machine gets closer to the first startup, I realize some of the packaging concerns that this setup presents. Like where am I gonna stack these multicolor units? Well, that's gonna be a problem for later me. For now, let's get into the setup a little bit. So this machine setup's fairly similar to the H2D like you've seen on the channel, or even the X1 Carbon. After everything's in its place and AMS tubes and power cables are daisy chained together, we can turn the printer on to see what we need to do to get printing. Luckily, I remembered to remove all of the bed screws this time. But it does prompt you a bit to make sure you're good to go. The printer does vibration compensation and leveling routines to gather its bearings a little bit. But the one thing that's different about this machine setup is related to the nozzle rack. There's a whole setup that happens here that begins with you installing the hot end latch, which is the thing that ultimately locks the nozzle being used into the tool head. And this is a piece that gets removed by the nozzle rack during nozzle changes automatically. It's all very fancy, of course. But from there, the thing prompts you to load filament and bind colors. It automatically detects which filament is in which AMS, and it tells the printer which one goes with which nozzle. And I like that. You like that? Beyond that, there isn't much going on here outside of the norm. Printers are wicked smart now, and the level of personal intervention needed has never been lower. This is arguably one of the more convoluted systems on a printer right now, and I was able to film everything and set it all up in less than an hour. That is way different than it used to be, and I'm here for it. And now we're gonna do the sponsored portion. Today we're talking about PCBWay, because they're paying for me to do that. They offer 3D printing services, which is why I partner with them. But if you need any manufacturing done, PCB creation, sheet metal fabrication or folding, of course additive manufacturing using exotic stuff like resin or titanium, anything you need to get a project done that you can't have inside your house, they can do it for you. So check the link below if you need some high-level stuff done to finish your project, because PCBWay is here to close the gap between the maker and the manufacturer. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. This is the Bamboo Vortex system, Bamboo's solution to all of the tool changer issues. Overall, I think it's a great idea, and Bamboo has implemented it perfectly. Well, almost perfectly. There's a couple of drawbacks, I guess. So the idea with a tool changer traditionally is pretty simple. Instead of feeding all the colors through a common nozzle, why don't we get them all their own separate tool head? This means time will be saved and material doesn't get wasted during purging to ensure clean color changes. So very cool, problem solved. Just get a bunch of tool heads and we're all set, right? No. So in the case of the snap maker, now we've got a lot of wasted space because we need room for all of these idle tool heads. Additionally, we've just multiplied some of the complexity and the cost of the system because now there's four different filament tubes, feeder motors, data cables, and of course the tool heads themselves. The other end of the spectrum is a multi-nozzle tool head, but as we've seen with the H2D, this comes at its own cost as well. Print speed. If the tool head's got more complexity on board, not only do you have some of the same disadvantages, but now the thing's heavy and it can be difficult to fling around the printer fast and accurately. And that kind of brings me to what we're seeing today. Bamboo's idea with Vortec is simple. Combine the best of both worlds, 
make it work super well. Now there's gonna be some that argue this is a compromise that combines the worst of both worlds, but I'm not gonna talk about that. What the system does is parks a rack full of nozzles only on the side here. The tool head has two nozzles on it, but one of them swaps with the nozzle on the rack, so that means seven color printing because each filament has its own dedicated nozzle. The remaining filament inside of the nozzle is purged into the prime tower before use to make sure it's extruding fresh filament that hasn't baked in a hot nozzle sitting off to the side. No color bleed, no purge waste. The system's super clever, really. It uses induction to heat the nozzle. There's these little data transfer ports happening on the top here. They heat super fast and the nozzle swaps happen super quickly. As it stands right now, the limiting factor in terms of color change speed is the AMS. Right now the printer can swap nozzles in like 10 or 20 seconds or whatever, but it's gotta wait an additional 10 or 20 seconds for the AMS to feed the filament into the nozzle. Currently my setup is one AMS per side of the tool head. So we're looking at four colors feeding the static tool head and four colors feeding the swapping tool head. The kit that I purchased only comes with 4.4 nozzles, so that's all I can do inside of a single print anyway. But that means each color on the right side AMS has its own dedicated nozzle at least, so we're covered in that regard. Now if I want each of the six nozzles to have a dedicated color, I'm going to need to daisy chain more AMSs to have more bays available. Because the nozzle rack can hold up to six nozzles. Also, I'm gonna need to find a place to put that AMS. So again, that's gonna be a problem for future me, I guess. But for now, let's begin printing a little bit. So for starters, of course, we're gonna do a nacho tester. This is a model that all of my machines get, so this can provide a lot of information on how the printer's doing. Right away, I can see that these nozzles need their specific offsets calibrated. This is something that I had to do with my H2Ds each time, so I wasn't surprised to see that this one needed it as well. But the process is simple and it doesn't take much time or material. After the machine prints its pattern and scans it with the tool head camera, the nozzles are now perfectly calibrated. This will ensure that there are no gaps or overlaps between color boundaries. And with that dialed in, we moved on to our next test, a plate full of tiny nachos. This is a great test because it can be difficult to print a bunch of little models without one of them coming detached from the build plate. It's not a total torture test, but it's kind of a stress test for a brand new machine. And it can provide some decent information based on the failures or the print artifacts present in each model. Luckily, this print went really well, like extremely well. I would venture to say that this machine maybe even prints better than my H2Ds. Maybe a little bit. Now I've only been able to print a couple hundred hours so far on this printer, but as soon as I got it, I trusted it enough to put it to work on my Etsy orders. And that's what it's been doing ever since, not skipping a beat. Now the other cool thing I was able to do with this single plate full of nachos that I printed is something that's really only enabled by the tool changer nature of this setup. Typically if you're printing this plate on a single nozzle setup, adding the number of models on the plate distributes the purge waste across all of these models. So you get a better value per model typically, but these concerns are no longer a consideration. Now we can do whatever we want because we've got fresh nozzles for each color. So I decided to do three different color combinations of nachos on this single build plate. This is made pretty simple inside of Bamboo Studio because along with Bamboo being good at hardware, they're actually pretty good at their software as well. Coloring the models is straightforward enough, but the workflow beyond that is unchanged if you're already used to using multicolor machines. The only thing that's added to the workflow is the screen where you sync the nozzles. This shows what's populated on the machine, and since I have a smaller and bigger nozzles loaded as well, they all show up in the array. After that, we sync the filament like usual and color the models to my specifications. A little bit of copy and paste later, and we've got a plate full of nachos that don't have to play by the typical rules of multicolor printing. Instead of being hit by a material penalty by way of purge waste at each color change, we can just swap as much as we want. No penalty. The only consideration is the time penalty since the material needs to be fed into the new nozzle from the AMS. But aside from that, the elimination of all the purge waste is a giant leap forward. I'm a huge fan. Finally, the last project that I wanted to do before I made my video. I decided to print out this dumpster model, but I made it giant. This model's technically Dominic the Dumpster by Valerian on Maker World, and I've got that linked below. But I rounded out the corners at the bottom to make it print a little bit better. And I added the eyes and mouth and Tinkercad quick so I could do just one print using the multicolor system. And this one turned out very good as well.
The surfaces are clean, the thing seems to have stuck to the bed well enough. Larger square models like this have a tendency to pull up at the corners because of the long diagonal filament runs. There's internal stresses at play inside of the material. That's why round corners perform a little bit better than sharp corners. That pulling force isn't focused on a single point, but it's distributed across the radius of that curve. So keep that in mind as you're printing if you're having warping issues. There is a line at the back which indicates that there was perhaps a little bit of warping. And there's a line here where the machine had sat for a while while it was waiting for a filament change because it had run out. Otherwise, this is a superb result, really. This machine's been impressive, and that's what I expect for something that's this expensive. But is it even worth springing for something that's this much money when we've got stuff like the Snapmaker for a third of the cost? Well, not quite a third, but a third-ish. Well, that's a topic that I plan to address in a different video. But for me, I'm a fan of this one. It's been a great addition to my fleet, hasn't let me down in the few hundred hours that I've been able to print on it so far, and I'd happily recommend you pick one up if you've had your eye on one. If you like the content that we make here, consider subscribing to our Patreon. It's only two bucks a month, and you get a little bit of perks, like not a lot of perks, like little, if you paid two dollars, what would you expect to get? Those are the perks you get. But you can join us as we approach our goal to do this full time. Also, check out keoprints.com if you want to get a shirt, hat, or hoodie. Bye.